Hey, what is up, everyone? This is Music Tech Help Guy, and I've got another sound design and synthesis and sampling video here for you today. We're going to be using Auto Sampler and Sampler to take a really simple stock piano patch that sounds like this. and turn it into our own ambient reversed piano pad. So one of my favorite things to do in Logic in terms of sound design, or if I'm looking for some inspiration for a new song, or just I want something that sounds more original and doesn't sound so stock, one of my favorite things to do is to take other software instruments and turn them into my own sample-based instruments using Auto Sampler and Sampler. Before we dive into today's video, let me quickly tell you about the long-term sponsor of the channel, Boombox. Boombox is a fantastic platform for musicians, bands, and producers who need a seamless way to collaborate, promote their music, and spark new ideas. I've been using Boombox for a while now, and it has been a lifesaver for collaborating with my mixing and production clients, especially when it comes to sharing files with remote collaborators, because I can securely invite my collaborators to a project where they can leave timestamped feedback on their tracks. So I can keep all of that feedback in one place, and that's just scratching the surface. Boombox also lets you set up artist pages, you can manage contracts and royalties, create playlists, create custom inboxes to receive files from remote collaborators, and tap into Boombot AI, your very own virtual co-writer. Visit boombox.io to claim your four gigabytes of free storage when you sign up today. Okay, so to get started, let's start with this easy piano preset. This is just a stock preset in Logic Pro. You can get it from the library under piano, easy. But the thing is, you can do this with any instrument. It's not just for piano. You can literally choose any third party or stock instrument in Logic and you can repeat this exact same process. So the first thing I like to do is I like to give it a little bit of sound design to make it not so dry. Uh, right now, this is, again, a stock piano patch. What I want to do is remove the Space Designer plugin that's on there, insert like a delay effect. So I'm going to go with the stereo delay. And this is just to kind of give it a little bit more, just a little bit more ambience. And I'm even going to turn off the tempo sync because that doesn't really matter. I'm trying to give some little fluttery sounds in there. Maybe it's a little too long. And I want to use two different values for the left and right. I could then add maybe some heavy reverb. Now you can use Space Designer, you can use Chroma Verb. I'm going to use a third party reverb called ROM from Native Instruments. This is one of my favorite reverb plugins for sound design. And then you can set this up, you know, any way you want. Anything, you know, whatever sounds good to your ear. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna load the auto sampler plugin on that track. And you can find this under utility auto sampler. Now auto sampler is one of my favorite plugins in Logic because what it does is it will sample whatever instrument you have, including all of its effects on that track, note for note. You can do it chromatically so it grabs every single note or you can do what I'm gonna do, do every tritone, every diminished fifth. Uh, every six semitones. Uh, and that's going to save space on our hard drive because for this type of instrument, it's not about it sounding like a realistic piano. We just need the source data, like the source recording. We just need the source samples to create new sound design. We don't need every single note on the instrument. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with the starting range of C1 and an end range of B5. I'm going to set the sample every to six semitones, which is again the stock setting, but 
If you wanted, you know, more fidelity in terms of the sample interpolation and extrapolation, you could roll this down uh, to sample more. But just keep in mind, that's going to eat up more hard drive space on your computer. You can set the sustain time. That's not really going to matter too much here, uh, although I will roll that down a little bit, like maybe five seconds. And then if you want to have your sample based instrument be velocity sensitive, you can set up velocity layers. And so what this means is auto sampler will sample each of these blue notes, not just once, but three times, one for each of these velocity ranges. Now for this video, just for brevity, I'm gonna keep this on one. So there's no velocity layers, but if that's something you wanna do, you can do that. You can also set up an auto loop, but I'm going to show you how you can manually loop in sampler in just a bit. So once you've got all of your auto sampler settings the way you want, you just click sample and it's gonna ask you to give a name to your sampler patch. And this is gonna create a .exs file, which is a sampler instrument file, or it comes from the old EXS24, but you know, sampler still uses EXS files. And then in addition to that, it's gonna create another folder on your computer with all of these samples in it. So I've already got one called reversed piano one. I'm gonna call this reversed piano two. And then you just click start and it's gonna sample every single note in that range. All of those blue notes are gonna get sampled one by one. And it'll give you an estimation for the time. So about two minutes remaining. So I'll just let that run off screen and I'll be right back. Okay, so the sampling is complete. I can close out auto sampler. You can mute or hide this instrument, you know, for now, just so you don't uh, lose it. So I'll just go ahead and hide that. And then I'm just gonna open up a brand new software instrument. And on that software instrument, I'm going to load up Sampler in stereo. And if you go up to the preset menu at the top, go down to auto sampled, you'll see all of your auto sampled instruments. So you can see here, reversed piano two, the one I just created, and that will load up that instrument. Now, as is, I'm gonna click mapping and zone so we can see all of the samples and just expand this out a little bit. As is, this is really just going to sound like a cheaper version of the patch that I uh, just played. Sounds like an old like uh, 80s, you know, uh, digital piano type sound, uh, but all of the effects are baked into the samples now. So the first thing we want to do here is we want to set a range for each of the samples, a playback range. Now you can click on any sample or a zone up here and you can set the playback range here, the sample range. But another way to do this is to go up to view and then go down to visible zone list columns and show the sample column. So here's the sample column. And what this will do is it'll show you the start and end of each sample, the fade in, the fade out, et cetera. So what I can do is I can grab the end point here and I can just drag it wherever I want it to go. So maybe I want it about there. And I can add a little bit of a fade to this as well. And what you'll see is under the sample column here, it now has a fade out value along with an end point value. So what I can do is double click on this, hit Command C to copy that and then hold shift while selecting the other samples, double click and press command V, then hit return. And it'll copy that same endpoint value to all of the other samples. Likewise, I can do the same thing for the fade out. I can copy and paste this over so that all of the samples have that exact same fade out point. Next, what you're gonna do is under the playback column, you're gonna hit command A to select all, and we're going to reverse the playback of all of these samples so that they play in reverse rather than forward. Now, what we wanna do here is we want to loop these samples. So I'm gonna go over to the loop column and we're gonna turn all of these on and I'm gonna select the alternate mode. There's forward, reverse, and alternate. So with alternate, at least with my reverse playback, this is gonna start from the back end of the, of the sample, 
play forward and then loop back and then go back to forward in a repeating pattern. So I'll set these all to alternate. And then what I'll do is I'll set the first sample and I'll set a loop range for this. So you can do this down here in the zone editor. And then you can also add a crossfade for the sample, just like so. And just like with the sample start and end and fade out, we can copy and paste these values. So we have a start point or end point of 12,375 samples. I'll just copy that, paste it over to the other samples. I'll do the same thing for the end point. Double click, paste this in for the other samples. And there we go. And then I have a crossfade of 11,000 samples or so. I'll go ahead and copy this over to the other samples. So it's not really a piano anymore, but it start, it's got some of the, like the sonic quality of a piano. Like you're hearing little percussive pops here and there. And that's why I set the loop range kind of really close to the start of the sample. I wanna get just a little bit of that percussiveness from the beginning of the sample, just as like a texture thing. If you go up to the synth panel, there are some different uh, modulation uh, matrix things here that you can change. All of these uh, auto sampler instruments are gonna start off with an LFO controlling pitch, uh, which is being controlled by the modulation wheel. Now, I don't necessarily want uh, a vibrato effect on this, but maybe I want some sort of like a filter effect. So what I can do is I can go to source here, and instead of being controlled by an LFO, I'm gonna select maximum, and then under target, I'll set this to filter one cutoff, and then modulation wheel can remain. And what this means is the modulation wheel is just gonna directly control filter one cutoff. But we do have to set a range for this, and you'll see that the amount here varies the position of the starting point and ending point of the modulation wheel. So let's do something like that. Now, right now, when I push up the modulation wheel, it's opening up the filter. If I wanted to do the opposite, you can click inverse here and then reset your amount slider and then reset the starting point here. So now when I push up the modulation wheel, the filter actually goes down. Let's add a little bit of filter resonance and drive just to give it a little, little bit of body. So once you're done uh, playing around with the synth parameters and playing around with the mapping and the samples, what you can do is come up here to this menu and select save. And what that'll do is it'll save all of those changes you made to the .exs file. So anytime you want to load up this patch, you can just simply load up sampler, come up here to the menu, and it'll be right here under auto sampled. If you want to take this a step further, if you want to add effects, maybe I want to add like the channel EQ to this. Let's maybe bring out the top end a little bit, maybe filter the low end, but then boost the sub lows a bit. And maybe I want to add like a different reverb to this. I could use Space Designer, Chroma Verb. I'm going to use a third party reverb. And then if you wanna save not only the sampler instrument, but also the channel strip setting for that track, you just select the track, go over to your library and click save at the bottom. And then you can give this a custom name. And then anytime I want to load up that patch again, I just create a new software instrument and then go over to the library, go under user patches, and there it is, reverse piano two. And I've got all of those plugins with their settings along with sampler.
And if I want to try this out with my MIDI regions up here that I recorded some chords on, I can do that as well. And now I have a completely custom 100% original instrument that no one else has. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel to see more content like this. As always, thank you so much for the support and thanks for watching.